All right, and welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self-liberator's paradise. Uh, the website is pasnia.com. And uh, yeah, please do check out the website for more on what we're building here, in particular at Veritas Pasnia, uh, as well as the overarching Second Realm Pasnia network currently under construction. Uh, much progress is being made, and more will be released in the coming months, uh, especially in Vani Fest 2, which if you aren't familiar with Vani Fest 2, go, go check it out, Um We'd uh, certainly love for you to get involved, and if you're vetted, yeah, come on out to Vani Fest. Uh, we're hoping to have a bigger event this year um, here at uh, at the, the homestead at the Free Republic. So uh, today I'm joined by Sekh Magora, uh, one of the hosts of the Agora podcast, uh, a show I was actually a guest on back in, uh, I think it was April of this year. Uh, we had a uh, quite a terrific discussion on uh, Second Realm strategy. And uh, uh, yeah, you can find that uh, TVP intermission number 60, uh, Second Realm strategy session with Sekagora and Penguin of the Agora podcast. Uh, so definitely go check that out. It was uh, um, definitely one of my more, I guess, my, one of my favorite, uh, I guess, discussions or guest appearances. So um, anyway, we've got Sek here. Um, he's uh, also been a, a long-time listener uh, to the Vani podcast here. So, um, yeah, we're going to have a, a great chat. And uh, without wasting any more time, Sekka, uh, welcome to the Vani podcast, man. Uh, how are you doing on uh, this fine Saturday? I'm doing well, Shane. Thanks for having me on. And uh, greetings from the, the territory of Sekistan. <laughs> Awesome. Very good. Very good. So I guess uh, um, first off, uh, uh, so hopefully my hopefully most of most of uh, my audience went over and has checked out your podcast since I was on there. Um, but uh, you know if they if they haven't, if they still aren't familiar with you, uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Uh, who are you? And uh, I guess how'd you get here? Uh, how'd you get to uh, Gorism and the realm of self liberation? Well, uh, um, it's kind of been a lifelong uh, journey. I mean, how much. How much time do you have, really? But uh, <laughs> I was raised by sort of uh, uh, hippie radicals, kind of a back to the land kind of parents. Um, so I was an anarchist for uh, I don't know all throughout my teenage years. Interesting. And then uh, later on, and yeah, later on, and maybe my late teens, early twenties, I kind of uh, I stumbled onto Rothbard. Um, I stumbled onto Rothbard kind of uh, in an, uh, an odd way, not as a more of a as a historian rather than a, a political theorist. Uh, I was very interested in sort of um, I was floating around in conspiracy circles then, and uh, you know, uh, learning more about the, the relationship between uh, <clears throat> American foreign policy and uh, sort of the corporate elite and that sort of thing. And that's that's how I stumbled onto Rothbard. And I had already been an anarchist, um, but, uh, I, you know, I got into more of a market-oriented uh, anarchism through uh, through that journey. And then from there, I, I stumbled onto Samuel Konkin and, and other works. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's how I got to from where I was to where I am now. Gotcha, gotcha. So it was uh, um, your parents. Uh, so I guess you, uh, your parents, your uh, it's kind of part of your childhood, and uh, I, and then and then you came across uh, Rothbard, um, and uh, I guess tell when did uh, the Igor podcast come in come into it? What was the the inspiration for that? Oh, um, well, I, I've been wanting to do a podcast for uh, a number of years, and it, it's just a matter of you know uh, time and effort. And I just never never did it until. Uh, um, I don't know, about six, nine months ago when a friend of mine said, hey, do you want to do a podcast? And uh, we just started doing it. And uh, it's called the Agora Podcast. And, um, you know, it's primarily focused on, um, you know, counter economics and other methods of uh, individual liberation and resistance to state and corporate power. But it's also about whatever we feel like talking about at any given time as well. So we get into some other um, conversations and interesting ideas and um, anything to do with, uh, you know, individual uh, liberation, essentially, um, and things that pertain to it. Right, right. And uh, at some point uh, in this path, too, uh, I guess uh, this podcast came into the picture for you. Um, as I found out when I was uh, when I was on your podcast, so I guess could, could you tell, how how'd you find out about uh, Vanu and uh, I guess could you give us a, I guess a, your views and perspective on the freedom strategy? So I don't know where I stumbled across you, but I, I was listening to um, 
you had a, another podcast prior to the Vanu mm-hmm. or in in um, at the same time as Vanu, um, and I was I stumbled across you maybe. I mean, it could have been on Ben Stone's podcast. Um, I'm not sure where exactly I stumbled across you, but I, I did. And I was listening to both of your podcasts, you know, kind of jumping back and forth. And uh, Vanu kind of struck me. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It was very interesting and also, more importantly, uh, practical. So, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of conversations and theorizing, um, they're interesting, but they don't necessarily have a practical application in the w- real world. Like they're fun, sort of fun uh, mental discourse. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Vanu struck me as something that was, uh, pra- you know, it could be practically applied um, to um, better the situation or our lives in the here and now, as opposed to some far off um you know, speculation about some ideal society in the distant future, you know? Mm-hmm. So I started listening to you back then, and then uh, I've, I've been listening pretty much since. I've, I've enjoyed the podcast. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's that good to hear. probably about 2012, maybe? 13? Somewhere in there? Mm-hmm. So, yep. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Well, um... <clears throat> yeah, I, it's uh, it's it's funny. I uh, in the uh, I'll mention the Pasnia Telegram chat because it'll be relevant for my if I meant for my next question. But uh, someone came in there. Uh, I guess a, a new. I guess uh, someone new to Vanu was listening to uh, uh, Vanu the uh, Vanu book one audiobook um, over at uh, the Vanu podcast website, and he was like, uh, "I feel like uh, feel at home listening to this. Like this is this is you know like Vanu. Um, it's I mean it's crazy that it was written back in the 1960s because it's so prevalent now. It's so prevalent. It's 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 never been more relevant." So, um, anyway, I guess, uh, it, yeah, in regards to the, the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat or the Pasnia Free Press chat, um, people might have seen a, uh, a little announcement um, about uh, uh, diplomatic relations between, uh, between our second realms. So, um, I guess, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing over there at, uh, the, fr- at the Free Territory of Sekistan, and, uh, yeah, give us a little idea of uh, what you're building there. Well, I'm doing the same thing I kind of have always done. I'm 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 homesteading, so I'm doing a lot of um, producing my own food and um, water collection and and that sort of thing. Um, I'm I'm attempting more of my own power generation, um, and it's nothing necessarily new. It's just uh, I've always been somewhat of a homesteader and a and a prepper, but. Um, I've been more focused on <clears throat> sort of, uh, as opposed to so like stockpiling, storing food um, or, or goods that you might need in an emergency situation, I've been working more towards um, producing them myself. So I'm mm-hmm. experimenting with lots of different um, methods of growing and lots of different uh, kinds of water um, collection and purification. Um, you know, I'm doing a lot of permaculture and, and companion planting, a lot of uh, sort of perennial vegetables and 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 uh, berries and that sort of thing. Um, and you know, I'm a, and a, I'm on a nice little spot in um, rural Tennessee, kind of off the beaten path. And um, I, I at this point can, uh, if if everything collapsed tomorrow, and I'm not saying that it will, but I could produce enough food for myself and my family. And um, it, it's uh, more of a joke than anything else, but I've been calling uh, just my plot of land, the, the free territory of Sekistan, you know, population four and sometimes five, depending on <laughs> who shows up. But um, yeah, the free territory of Sekistan, that's that's my uh, my sovereign domain. And uh, yeah, like you said, um, a few weeks ago, months ago, um, I... I issued a declaration to uh, your territory uh, stating that we would have uh, voluntary and peaceful interactions and uh, trade for mutual benefit um, if the, the need so arises. So uh, a, uh, <clears throat> a, a gr- uh, agreement of non-aggression, we'll say. Right. Right. And uh, one of, uh, I hope, many more, many more to come. Uh, one of the one of the things and all this will be released in, in much more deep detail when I get the stakeholder bulletin uh, episode out. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's our main focus this year is we've got all of these like all, all of these, um, you know, individuals, 
um, you know, homesteads, second realms. Like we've got these, we've got like this, this network of people out there. It's just time to put it together. And, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't really foresee the future. I mean, I couldn't have foreseen things coming together the way, the way they are now. So I can't foresee what things are going to look like in a year or two. But, um, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's not really a need for the first realm anymore as far as, as far as I can see it, um, in the, in the coming years, um, maybe at this time a little bit, but, uh, it's part of the transition, but, um, with years and, 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 you know, there's at least, at least another half dozen others that we can put on a, put on a, a you know, a second realm security culture minded map, um, for, for like-minded outposts. So it's, it's, it's great to see the progress so far. I'm happy that we've, we've made, uh, we've made contact. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to see another podcast on solutions. Uh, and, and, and speaking in terms, of speaking in regards to that again, um, yeah, Kyle and I did an episode on self liberational media back in I think it was season one or season two. And uh, yeah, it's good to see. Um, for 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 so long, it kind of seemed like it was just us doing solution stuff. Um, or not just us, but like as far as like as far as a focus without without some without you know without some sort of other baggage with it um so i i, I pre i'm really happy you guys are here and uh, helping us helping helping us push solutions and also working with us um so um yeah I, I definitely appreciate that i definitely appreciate that and there's not really a question there but um well, do you have anything to respond with well yeah thank you man i i appreciate the kind words and um yeah i mean um i'm trying to do what i can to not only um liberate myself, but, you know, uh, possibly uh, put out ideas that I think other people might find value uh, in their own, uh, their own lives, um, which is hard to do because everybody has their own um, different values and preferences and lifestyles. And um, it's really hard to provide sort of concrete examples because you don't know what the other person's lifestyle is mm -hmm. or preferences Those are. Situations you know. are so different too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what works for me or what works for you is might be entirely different, you know, so it's, it's very hard to sort of uh, nail down concrete uh, examples of, of uh, solutions to, you know, sort of gain more freedom and autonomy. Um, and it really takes um, a lot of imagination on um, some other person's part, like well, whoever is uh, trying to find more freedom, it really takes them using their own imagination based on the information that they have and that a lot of that information is not something I have. So it's hard for me to say what you should do. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, but you're right. And we have talked about this before. Uh, I think there's a lot of people doing similar things uh, like homesteading or um, whatever the situation is. Uh, you know, there, there's lots of little islands or pockets and what needs to be developed is sort of uh, like you said, networks between um like-minded people um because it might come very soon that we actually need to rely on each other a lot more than we are now and uh, i know for you know we're we're both sort of individualists and you know you talk to a lot of individualists a lot and the idea of excuse me the idea of um community building almost leaves a bad taste in their mouth um you know community sounds like something sounds like another uh, bad or authority yeah <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, um, you know, I had some, I was, I posted, uh, I posted community technology by Carl Hess on some, uh, somewhere I, I deal with. And somebody was like, community, community is uh, inherently authoritarian, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, um, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, community just means that we, you know, kind of, uh, you know, relate with each other, band together for mutual benefit. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have to mean anything more than that. Um, and I think that is something that's lacking right now uh, is, um, you know, we're a lot, we're a lot of individuals on islands. And I think community uh, is something that is going to be very necessary in the coming years. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. And I know, I know speaking for me personally, yeah, I went down the, the Mises Rothbard path and definitely path and definitely more from kind of a, I guess a right-wing persuasion. And um, it's, it took a few years. Um, it, it definitely took a few years to, to get past that political programming per se. Um, but, um, but I, I noticed like with Vanu, especially um, like, if you look at Rayo's writings, like you would, you 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 would kind of he, it would kind of look like he's coming from the left in, in some ways and uh that never that never really bothered me but um 
since I guess a few years back, I, I guess I made the decision that I cared more about what people were doing. Um, like, uh, are are they just theorizing about it, about uh, you know a hypothetical free society, or are they, um, or are they are they are they out there doing things? And and the one the example that always comes to mind for me is uh, we interviewed uh, this fan nomad couple from Australia, definitely more from. Um, you know, more from kind of that, uh, that's that varying, uh, you know, someone I wouldn't have talked to a handful of years ago as a hardcore ANCAP, right? Um, and uh, would have missed out on, on, on a great conversation, a great, um, you know, great learning opportunity. And um, yeah, as I, the, I, I certainly, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's certainly a, a touchy, t a touchy subject for, for, for some folks. But um, yeah, whether it's, whether it's out of uh, necessity or, um, or just, just the way that I'm looking at it now is because I, I don't, I don't like to, to go into the fear mongering. I don't think there's any, any need for it. But, uh, if you like most of the stuff you get from the survival society, whether we're talking about food or, or, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals or whatever is just straight up poison. So like, like I don't want their stuff anyway. Right. Um, I'd rather, you know, go to, uh, I'd rather, you know, source it myself or, um, you know, um, get seeds from the free territory of Sekistan and grow it here myself or whatever that, whatever the situation may be. So, um, whether it's, yeah, whether it's out of necessity or more, more so just, um, preference. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly, certainly where things are going, it seems. Yeah. That's the one good thing. That's the one thing we have going for us is, so not only is self-liberation, counter-economics, uh, whichever, you know, or similar ideas, not only are they uh, beneficial at sort of building an alternative, alternative society to the one that exists now, but they have immediate personal benefits to you um, regardless of any other um, aspects. So what I mean is like what you just said, I grow my own food. Now I'm removing my my energy and effort and resources from the the sort of corporate agriculture system, mm -hmm. and I'm so, while I'm doing that I'm also we're we're building a, another uh, essentially a whole new system of food production right so we're doing both of those mm -hmm. things, but we're also just getting getting great food that's not sprayed with a bunch of you know garbage at the grocery store Do you know what I mean so you have that immediate uh, um, personal benefit. So I think this is a um, this is an important thing to to kind of drive home is regardless of what else happens in the world, uh, you growing your own tomatoes, you're going to get much better tomatoes than you would buying it at Walmart or something. So um, it's you know it's it has uh, you know multiple benefits at at the same time. So mm -hmm. even if we um, you know our ideal society never comes to fruition. Um, we we have not wasted our time in, in doing this. It, it's benefiting us in, in the here now. Like you said, I, you don't. Their food is terrible, or at least unreliable at best. And the, and the same with most of their goods and services and inside this sort of corporate uh, system. So j you just producing it yourself, or finding uh, people that produce things themselves and and exchanging is going to be immediately beneficial to you. So I. I don't I think that's not something that gets uh, sort of harped on enough is um, all other things aside um, you're it, it's in it within your self interest to to um, to engage in counter economics so. right right yeah that's uh that's 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 definitely true that's definitely true so I guess um I I, I I, I guess uh, if we can get to, to some more concretes, um, you've been doing this for a long time. I've only been doing it for, for about a year and a half. I've learned a lot, obviously. Um, de definitely learned a lot ex expanding the herd. Expanding the herd got to, got a bunch of birds. Um, getting getting fresh eggs every day now, which is which is incredibly rewarding um, to, to, to to put it mildly. And um, so I guess uh, um, I guess could you give us a little more insight on on I guess maybe. Um, uh, I don't know a few things you've uh, a, a few systems you put in that you, that uh, you can tell tell our listeners about that helped you with your liberation or um, I guess just just something you like to share about uh, your your homestead. Well, um, so it's hard for me not to ramble for a long time about gardening, but um, <laughs> like I said, I, I was I was kind of raised on on a homestead, and so I've been gardening. You know, um, since be, almost before I could walk, and um, I will say that if I had to tell a new uh, um, person, a beginner, to somebody who was interested in 
homesteading and gardening, I would say relax, start small, and uh, take it one step at a time. So what I mean is um, what I've seen from sort of uh, people just getting into gardening or homesteading is they get what uh, what's called like analysis paralysis. So they, they spend so much time and it can be so much information that it's overwhelming. But the thing is, is you don't necessarily need to know everything to just start doing it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, I was trying to explain uh, some gardening tips to somebody who was looking to put in a garden. And we were talking and I could just see that their eyes just like kind of glazed over after a while of me just like, uh, you know, going on and on about different uh, aspects of gardening. She's like, well, maybe I should take a, a master gardening course. And I said, well listen, you're not growing for craft foods. Like you don't have to increase your yield by 10% to make, you know, uh, certain quotas or whatever. It doesn't take very much to, to produce a decent amount of food. So essentially it's just at decent soil. Don't water, too, don't water too much. Don't, you know, water it enough. And honestly, you can, um, you can create a, a very decent amount of food. Now, later on, as you start going along, you can try different methods uh, of companion compl uh, companion planting or, or permaculture, mulching, you know, tilling, no-till, these sort of things. But you don't necessarily need to do that to just get started. You know, you get yourself a 10 by 10 little plot or 15 by 15, you know, put some seeds in. Um, you know, obviously, you got to know some basic information about when to plant. But other than that, it really does not require... Um, all that much knowledge to just get started. And I think a lot of people are intimidated because there is almost so too much information out there and not all of it is necessarily relevant immediately. Mm -hmm. A lot of it you can kind of pick up as you go, go along, you know, you start small and then expand as you go. And, you know, I've been doing this. I mean, it depends on when you want to start counting, but, but 30 years. So it doesn't, I didn't, I didn't learn all this in a day you know so it takes you just start very small and then you expand i still do the same thing i expand just a little bit every year spend you know put in another garden put in you know uh, another section of um perennial herbs and vegetables and and you just add to it a little at a time and it really that's the best um all the other information is is that you need in the world is out there and, but that is the to me the most important because I think it prevents a lot of people from trying just the, mm -hmm. the sh sheer amount of knowledge and the not knowing what you don't know you know yeah yeah that's true that's uh, it's definitely true get you know, um, <laughs> yeah yeah there's uh, that's 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 all very very well said very well said and um, I I don't uh, I I don't do a lot of gardening myself um, at this time I've got uh, ch I've got birds in the front yard that have, they're yeah they're they're tearing that up and fertilizing it which I and then might put a greenhouse there I'm not sure what we'll do next uh, next year or the year after but um, they're getting that ready for some some really high quality um, you know garden products there um, there soon but. Um, I know, um, yeah, for me on things, it's just kind of, uh, it's just kind of pulling the trigger. I decided I wanted to start incubating bird eggs and I had never had any experience doing that before, but you know what you can do? Um, you can get a, I mean, there's none of this, I mean, there's, I, I, what I've found, none of the stuff is really is really that difficult. Um, and there's always, you can always just find the information, right? What is it? Just one search away and you have like everything you need to know about incubating birds. Like it's not that hard. And then you just do it. And the first time you, you see how it goes and then you learn and you, uh, you reassess and, and hopefully do better next time. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think it's, it's important just to get started and whatever, whatever you're doing, just, just get started. And, um, especially now, um, <laughs> especially now when, um, when the risks of, of being dependent upon the servile society are, are so, or, you know, are so potentially great, um, if we're being reliant upon it. So yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, right there with you. Um, do you, so do you have uh, one thing we're working towards here at, uh, Veritas Pasnia is, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, second realm, you know, uh, crypto anarchies, uh, involved there. So we want to have, th we want to have a lot of things automated and, uh, be, be, you know, able to run remotely. So we we're, we're going to get an, I guess, an automated watering system at some point. Um, I guess, do you have, uh, um, do you have any systems like that set up on, on, on your property? Is that of any interest whatsoever? Um, yes, I mean, but it's 
pretty low tech. Uh, yeah. It's essentially a timer hooked to an ele- electric pump hooked to my uh, water collection system. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And most of it is automated. <clears throat> and that, that's another point I, w- I would make is any um, any effort you can take to try to save yourself some labor is probably beneficial because it can be overwhelming sometimes. So if you can save yourself some um, some labor, then I, I would do so. But um, yeah, no, I still do some watering when necessarily by, you know, manually by hand, I'm still using electric pump from my uh, <clears throat> uh, from my water collection systems but <clears throat> yes I do have some um, some timers and stuff set up so it just comes on so it's less I have to do I also homesteading is not all I do I also run a business so it's um, you know after working all day I don't necessarily want to spend hours you know ha- having to do things if I can automate them mm-hmm. you know and that's another point I probably should make is um, So, um, a lot of things that you'll pick up gardening or homesteading or, or, um, that sort of thing are also highly individual. So some of it will depend on your property. Some of it will be depend on your own skills and, um, abilities and, um, your climate. So there's a lot of, uh, information deficit that I have about what your homestead what would work for your homestead. Mm -hmm. So an example I use a lot is I could increase my yield in my gardens by planting things closer. I could probably get uh, more produce, but I'm kind of getting on in years. And um, honestly, I I don't like, um, if I have to go in there and and weed or something like that, or pick vegetables, I don't want to have to be like a, you know, a ninja doing (laughs) twister to try to, you know, so I make my, you know, my pass a little wider. So it's just easier for me. Do you know what I mean? Right. So yeah, yeah. it's little things like that, that you're just kind of, kind of pick up as you go. Um, that um, are, that are highly individual. They pertain to you and your wants and needs and your property and, um, and also your physical abilities and know-how and all these sorts of things. Um and sometimes it takes trying things a certain way. Like you can't plan these things ahead of time. So you have to kind of try it and say, well, this might work in the next year. You might f- want to do something different because something works a little better. You know, it, there it's um, the possibilities are endless, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I've been doing, doing this uh, uh, um, quite a long time since uh, like I was a kid and you mentioned the left and the right thing earlier. And uh, I was at least four, fortunate enough to um, always kind of think the left and the right thing is uh, a bit of a load of uh, they're useless terms <laughs> at best right yeah um, and they're um, actually detrimental at worst and I don't I don't think they have any real uh, significant value at least in the terms of sort of radical politics Um Mm -hmm. I never really thought of myself as a leftist, although I did hang around with uh, sort of, I guess, some some right wing conspiracy types in my uh, late teens, because that's what I was interested in. And that's what got me into prepping as well. Um, um, And 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 more into homesteading. Um, So I I just wanted to to mention that because you you mentioned that left and right mean nothing to me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, I mean, I could go in, I could go in and, and explain, but I usually just use those as throwaway terms. Cause I don't like Paul, uh, you know, discussions on politics anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I always kind of think about it. I don't think about this. Like I, I don't really, I'm so far away from the survival, survival society that I don't really think about in, in terms of their definitions at all. So my, my, the way I look at it is more so kind of the radical, like left, left, like, I guess, uh, like anarcho capitalism versus, um, you know, versus, I guess kind of the, I guess kind of more, more of that variety. But it's it's irrelevant anyway. I'm I'm with so, you. Well, yeah, I was gonna say even in that regard, like once you get to a certain point, it's like, um, well, what are we talking about here? You're just talking about like preferences in your own life, you know, or right. you know what I mean? Like, so whatever somebody else wants to do is is fine by me. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. as long as they're not hurting anyone else. Um. So really, you know, if you start to 
you get so far it's like the opposite horseshoe theory right you get so far into like um liberatory politics to where um you i don't know you're just trying you at a certain point you're just talking about individual preferences right um that don't necessarily have any bearing on you whatsoever and if somebody wants to live their lives another way that's completely fine by me um it may or may not be in line with my own preferences but um to that point i don't even think you could really fit a lot of people's preferences neatly into even within anarchist <laughs> circles in into left or right really you know what i mean yeah. um, um so I, I don't know i just i never never was a fan <laughs> never was a fan right there's right. a when, meme when I really, saw. Like, when really what's important is the, the foundation is like whether the foundation is coercion or whether the foundation is, is peace and volunteers. And that's really all that matters. And then if uh, if you'd rather, uh, you know, work by if you'd rather work alone or work in, work in groups or whatever your preferences are. Yeah, it doesn't matter beyond that. But go ahead. You're about to jump in. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. No, I just saw a meme the other day and it was like, uh, it was like, are you far left or far right? And it said, bitch, I'm farming. Oh, can we swear on here? Yes. Yeah, you're good. You're good. <laughs> but then that, that's, yeah, yeah. But that's where I'm at. You know, it's like I don't. What are What are you doing? You know, like I'm I'm over here trying to pick cucumbers right now. I don't care what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like it's just that's kind of where my mindset is at. Um. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 uh, to to bring up, uh, I guess a real, I guess a kind of kind of related point. Um, but, uh, I guess the, the, the discussions in the, like I've seen, I, I'm still on Twitter. Like Twitter's like the, Twitter's the only, I guess the only, I guess, socialized. So I'm I guess, sorry. The Twitter's the only, the only, I guess, the, I guess, centralized platform I'm on now. Um, I guess the really terrible ones. Um, so that's, uh, but, but anyway, it's, uh, the, the whole border debates within the, within, you know, libertarian circle is coming around again. And it's like, holy shit. Um, like the script is repeating, like every couple few years, it's like this stuff just comes back and, uh, it never really, it never goes anywhere. Um, when really what matters, like the, the people, you look at the, what, what's going on in the world and there should be a little more urgency and action, I would think. But then again, that's what the, the political circus is for. Um, well, I'll, <laughs> you don't I'll have, don't have energy for I'll it. The, no, I don't either. And I can't, I can't spend time or blood pressure with arguing on the internet. But um, I'll, I'll say this about that is people tend to focus on um, things that are very far away and out of their control. Yep. And I, I was guilty of this as sort of a, a young radical as a, as a teenager. And it, and it makes you very, very angry, you know, like, uh, so I'm, you know, 16 years old and I'm very, very concerned about, you know, the CIA shipping drugs into the black community and wars overseas and et cetera. Um, and it's a lesson in futility a lot of times where it, sh it just makes you angry and it gives you no real benefit and you have very little control over, you know, things like that. So what, what is much more beneficial to me is to focus on things within my own sort of sphere of influence mm -hmm. and um, try to make changes in, um, in, in my own life and try to benefit things that I, I can control or try to um, make things better um, in, my, in my life and the people around me and the people closest to me. And that was something I learned um, fairly early on, and it was... It did wonders for my mental health. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, um, because it, you can be a very, very angry and sort of what they call black pilled young uh, person if you're spend all your time focusing on things that you have, you can't. There's not that much you can do to change. You know, like so if you if you focus on things that you can change, like in your your own life, it's it's much more rewarding, and you can see. A, sort of immediate improvement, you know, whereas yeah. even if you were successful at, you know, trying to change something um, in the, the you know, the grander chessboard of the world, um, whatever effort you could put into that would have very, very little effect, you know? Right. That's, that's such, such a good point. And that's, been, I guess, something I've been thinking about the, the, the past year too, is um, I, I guess, yeah, focusing our, our effort and our, our, our resources and our finances 
um, yeah, diverting those to the second realm because, um, as you're saying, rather than uh, I guess that's that's even worse than uh, that. I mean, that's that's even worse. Just you know, I guess needlessly feeding energy and emotion into, um, you know, into the ether. Um, you know, just pissed off about the federal government or what, uh, you know, what the World Bank is doing or what the, you know, like all all of those things. Um, you know, just I guess I guess needlessly and kind of uselessly just releasing that energy. Um, versus, you know, doing something um, productive with that, as you were saying, like putting that energy into homesteading or, or uh, whatever, whatever it may be to, to the individual in question, but um, just putting that towards something that will actually benefit you um, and not just, not just wasting it, right? Um, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, again, I think that's, that's really kind of the focus of 2022 here at Pasnia is, I mean, uh, really, really continuing to continuing to focus that energy and the resources into the second realm because, um, you know, that's 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 what it's going to take to build it. And um, I think we're going to see a, a lot of really significant progress um, if that's if that just if it continues, if it continues to go in that direction. So, yeah, that's a fantastic point. Um, fantastic point. Well, I will also say, too, is, uh, you know, focusing on more productive um things in your own life and in interpersonal relationships and, um, you know, building up, um, you know, s sort of bottom up organic systems amongst each other. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, it has the, you know, um, it's very productive and it has, you can notice the immediate benefits in your own life, but we are also, we could very well be changing the world as well. You know, it might take lo a lot longer and, and, and or it might be the only way to do it is to just, you know, it's like Buckminster Mr. Fuller said is that you don't, um, <laughs> now I can't remember the quote, but you I don't, know, yeah, um, I know you don't, you don't change the system by fighting it or by working within it. You change it by building, by building the newer, whatever it is, whatever, however, yeah. Badly that makes the old one obsolete. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yes, exactly right. Um, it's, I love that quote for, for the reasons I'm just saying right now is, so if you're concerned about things that are very far away from your, um, let's say, sphere of control, then the, the way that you're going to change those things is by working within your sphere of control. You know, it's sort of the think globally, act locally, you know, trope or whatever. But um, so what we're doing uh, could very well um, in very, very small ways um, make it make a difference in, in the world as well even though that might not necessarily be our goal mm -hmm. yeah yep indeed indeed um you know the, the the side benefits yeah the side benefits accrue and uh again it directly benefits um like it, it's you know i I, I'll put it this way, because like I wish people would be more selfish in the sense that they would focus on their on their their own liberation, because they indirectly assist others too, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, and yeah, the the benefits accrue. Um, the benefits accrue. It snowballs. Um, I guess the way Rayo put it back in the 1960s was that um, was that uh, even you know even coercers in the servile society benefit whenever someone doesn't pay taxes, right? Whenever someone, um, you know, when someone participates in counter-economics, even they indirectly benefit because that money is not then therefore allocated um, towards, you know, violating the rights of someone else. So, um, so yeah, and this is, I think, even, even, even more substantial that um, it's just not, uh, people want, um, nowadays people want like the, that, that magic, that magic solution that'll, you know, work in, in a couple of days or a couple of weeks. And um, that just doesn't really exist. Um, as far as I've been able to find out, um, you know, things take work. They, they yeah, take time. And it never will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I think that's a trick, right? That's, that might be one of the biggest tricks is that things happen, you know, really quickly overnight. And, um, it's just, it's not how they work. It's not how they work. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, um, so yeah, work toward, yeah, working towards, um, you know, more expansive goals, um, by focusing, by focusing on, on, you know, focusing inward or I guess on one's, on, on oneself. Um, Yeah. Kind of rambling a little bit, but no. So you were just mentioning the taxes thing. Now I used to be pretty sold on the yeah we got to uh, keep our money from the tax man's hand so we can sort of you know starve the beasts and keep that money out of you know every dollar that you can keep from the state is one less dollar using the splatter brown kids body parts all over the sand in some other country. I'm not sold on that idea anymore because how much how much of 
the the federal budget do you think actually comes it's from? It's true. Taxation? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Probably like it, yeah. It probably it probably doesn't matter, right? They're just going to print it if they want to if they want to do it. Yeah. They're just they'll just print it. Yes. Um. They don't. They don't really need us. Our tax. It's true. It's true. Yeah. To keep to keep that machine going, what they need is our um, our mental energy. Uh, I don't mean I don't mean that necessarily in like some sort of spiritual vampire sense, but I I mean they need us to um, be very concerned and put our energy into what they're doing is what they need. That's what kind of keeps this uh, you know this circus going um they don't need our their money our money they'll just print more um right. but what they need is us either defining ourselves on our um in our relationship to to the state they need us either to be compliant and obedient or they need us to justify them um by being very concerned in opposition to what they're doing um because that too draws attention to them and it makes them sort of seem um more legitimate uh because uh you know i i highly recommend sort of uh you know you're familiar with ben stone's beyond civil civil disobediences uh acting out and resisting the state is often actually a legitimate form of uh like statecraft like uh it's it's almost uh it's well within the realm of um the political system to whatever the thing is, draw, you know, artwork on the, the sidewalk or protest or, you know, run into uh, the Capitol building and take a shit on Nancy Pelosi's desk or whatever the thing is, that, that is all very, uh, the, the state is just fine with all of that. Uh, it's sort of turning your back and not granting them the, um, the energy. Like it's not, you know, it's like they say to, to hate somebody, is you're expending a whole lot of energy on a person that you're not really even fond of. Mm -hmm. So you're, the best move is just to, to live well. That's the best revenge, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think um, I think what needs to happen is to to no longer um, expend our, our mental energy or our efforts at all in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is kind of the, the real answer. Um, and anything else is just sort of... Um, playing games on their court yep yep it is true it is true um and uh yeah well said i've i've i, I, I haven't released many podcasts as of late but uh and one of the one of the recent ones um yeah it's it's about uh you know utilizing our, our generative force of creation to build um you know build the you know this this free network or you know build liber you know build uh, liberated lifestyles ourselves um not just needlessly and wasteless wastelessly just feeding it into the into the survival society um yeah, I've definitely stopped doing that, um, but uh, <laughs> um, it's uh, it does it it, it uh, yeah it, uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I guess um, if we could get to to a little more, I guess uh, back to your homestead, maybe to some some more um, some more things we might be able to, to possibly uh, learn from you. Um, I guess um, could you, do you have any uh, homestead projects? Uh, I guess in the works or coming up in, in the future that uh, you'd like to, to talk about. Well. Believe it or not, I am at the the probably the first point in my life where I didn't own chickens, mostly because I have a lot of other things going on, and I'm not a giant fan of eggs. But uh, <laughs> so when if lumber ever comes back down, I'll be um, building a chicken coop just as a you know a steady source of of protein. I've been getting a lot more into. Um, I do a lot of my own composting and I'm a huge soil nerd. So I make a lot of my own soil uh, and I make different soil mixes and that sort of thing for different applications. Mm -hmm. okay. So I've been getting um, more and more nerdy about that. Um, and I've been doing a lot more um, companion planting, um, which I've found to have uh, a large amount of success with. Um, it seems to be really beneficial, especially for... Tennessee is all um, very hard clay. Seems like the whole state's made out of clay. So it's um, very difficult to, um, you know, get some good soil composition. Most people just make raised beds. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that if you can, um, you know, start uh, applying a lot of, a lot of compost, 
and um, various, you know, organic matter and couple that with sort of uh, uh, various methods of companion planting. And um, it, it seems to help quite a bit. Um, so I'm doing a lot of that. Um, I'm getting more into uh, cuttings. Um, so making plants from cuttings of other plants. Mm -hmm. um, and this uh, pretty much this fall, I'll be doing a pretty large cold crop. And um, I'll be thinning out my raspberry and blackberry plants and making those, making another patch out of those. Um, I've also been just growing things that I never really grew before, like horseradish and, and just trying new things, tobacco, grew tobacco. It's just, just trying my hand at like some different things. Mm -hmm. um, mostly just trying it out for fun, you know, put it in a couple of plants of this or, or that. Um, uh, I think that's all I can think of offhand for right now. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. always something here. Look, I have the benefit of being able to grow almost year round. So I just, um, we do a lot of different stages of planting throughout the year. Right. Um, so I pretty much have vegetables growing all year, doing a lot of canning this year. Um, I mean, we've always canned and made pickles, but ooh, the thing I've done the last few years is rather than growing like um, a decent amount of everything, we go hard <laughs> with one uh, specific thing or two specific things and just grow a lot of that and then just can the surplus. Right. So last year it was, uh, last year we made over 200 jars of pickles and that might not sound like a lot, but that's literally like you're making four or five jars of pickles every day to the point where um like you you almost hate pickles at that point yeah, but so we <laughs> so that's a lot of pickles so we we're doing a lot of that but this year so we switched it up this year this year we're doing a lot of um beans and also um tomatoes so we're making a lot of sauces and canning a lot of ex extra beans and uh the beans i did we did uh a slight variation of what they call the three sisters method. Mm -hmm. So the three sisters method is a uh, companion, companion planting method where you grow beans, corn, and usually they, you also grow squash um, and you allow the corn plants to act as almost like a trellis for the beans and or the squash. But um, I have a huge cornfield and that would be so much squash so I already grow a, 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 just a few plants of squash to the point where, like, you can't eat squash every day, you know. So I, I and when you can it, it never really tastes good. Uh, canned squash and zucchini is not very tasty if you let it go a year. It's very mushy and loses its flavor. So hmm. I have no desire to can a bunch of squash. So we switched it out for... Uh, radish and carrots as so we're doing corn beans and it was something like four or five hundred bean plants and so now instead of doing you know four or five jars of pickles every day we're doing four or five jars of green beans um but we're, we're doing a lot of that and um something to do with the weather here uh I'm not, i know i'm not the only one but our tomatoes are not turning red so we have something like i think 60 tomato plants something like that mm -hmm. uh, and none of them turn red they've all been like huge green tomatoes um really? for months now and it's because we've, we've had kind of a um, cloudy rainy summer and they need the the sunshine to to ripen up right okay. um but, but that worked out perfect for me because we've been canning beans like a machine and if I had to can beet tomatoes at the same time, that would have been a lot of work. So it actually worked out because the beans are probably, you know, they're slowing down a little bit. And now hopefully the tomatoes start turning red and um, we can start canning those. So it kind of breaks up the labor a little bit. That's the other thing is try not to make it like work. Do you know what I mean? Like if you make gardening like work, you're just not going to want to do it. So, mm -hmm. any, you know, anything you can do to make it, you know, fun or <laughs> save yourself some labor, um, I 
highly recommend. Otherwise, it, it uh, especially if you work another job, it's just going to feel like a chore to you, you know? Sure. Sure. Um, all, yeah, very, very good stuff. I will mention the, the first thing that came to mind. Um, you mentioned that you have that kind of clay soil there where you are. We have, a, well, we have a lot of that here in, in, uh, in Southern Illinois too. And, um, I'm glad to hear you've had success with, um, I guess improving the soil. Um, cause we've got, I've got a lot of, a lot, and I'll tell you a lot of lamb and goat shit. Um, and you know, hay and fertilizer and stuff like that. And that was the plan was basically just, um, obviously not let that go to waste. Um, and, uh, you know, just use that to, to really hit things hard. So, um, I guess, uh, yeah, over the so course you, of, yeah, go ahead. No, so you could do one of two things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you can try to till that clay and then add with what's called, a, you're going to amend the soil. So you're going to add, um, compost and natural fertilizers. Uh, manure and 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 chopped up leaves and that sort of thing and you're going to try to change the soil composition now that's one way to do it and it's probably much harder what you also could do is take all um that manure and um lay down and actually raise up uh, as opposed to trying to amend the existing soil so you could lay down what uh, newspaper all across the area that you want to uh, to be a garden mm -hmm. and then you add your uh, manure on top uh, and then start mixing in um, leaves and such um, and possibly some other uh, you let that break down a little bit and then you add some what's called finished compost over the top of that and essentially you've just created a, a raised bed but that will also kill all the you know the grass and weeds underneath it mm -hmm. um as you as you do that and eventually it'll just all mix into the soil but it'll give you the uh ability to essentially immediately utilize that natural fertilizer to grow plants immediately so you're not you're not fighting the clay right. until hmm. you know years down the road you, you know because it's, it's even if you it's going to take you several years to turn clay into actually uh, decent soil, you know, adding to it a little at a time mm -hmm. and also growing into it. So if you just kind of build that up with the compost on top, eventually that'll all break down and sort of mix in with the, the clay and you, you don't, it'll be probably less work for you. Interesting. But. Okay. Very interesting. Well, I I'd certainly, certainly appreciate that. Um, anything to, you know, to save, save a little work is always beneficial. Um, I guess the, the other thing that, that you mentioned that I, I, I'd uh, like, I guess, like to inquire further on is, um, I guess, um, what's, what, so you, uh, what other sort of stuff do you do, um, um, with soil? Do you work with any, um, I guess, um, I guess, uh, I guess like bacteria cultures or anything. Um, do you, um, so I know there's, uh, there's stuff that I'm looking into potentially, um, to use, um, like aquazyme and biozyme, um, adding in, I guess, live cultures, um, that help to help to drip more, I guess, help to, um, I guess more rapidly, um, develop the soil. So I guess, do you have any, any knowledge on that? I haven't, um, I haven't fooled with, uh, bacteria or, you know, beneficial bacteria or, or anything of that sort. Mostly when you're dealing with, um, uh, organic material and making soil mix, it, it already has its own sort of ecosystem within it, mm -hmm. um, to where there's, you know, beneficial bacteria that exist in most natural forms of organic matter. It like that, that's already occurring within your, um, compost pile whether you you know whether you do anything about it or not there's already going to be you know beneficial bacteria in there mm -hmm. but i do uh, a lot of um um what's called vermicol uh vermicomposting so i have um you know that's a fancy word for saying i have a lot of worms and i use worms to expedite the composting process okay in addition to um several compost bins in varying stages of composition. So what I did, if you want to make it easy and cheap, is I just uh, took old old totes, like the plastic totes, and I just had some that were, you know, kind of just sitting around or were broken or a little bit or something. Mm -hmm. And you just drill holes in the bottom. And you don't have to. You can buy worms on the Internet, um, but you don't have to. You can... Um, just get yourself uh, some kind of container. It doesn't matter what it is. Drill holes in the bottom. 
And whenever you find worms, just throw them in there. And the reason for doing this is worms produce fertilizer. So now, um, and they also uh, compost material very, very rapidly. So it allows you to um, to go th uh, to process through vegetable matter at a very, very high rate. And then wh whatever is left in there um, is, uh, you know, you can buy worm cast. It's called worm castings. You can buy that at the store. It's very, it's a very good organic fertilizer. And um, you can do a number of things with that. You can add that to, if you're, you're composting it by no, another method, you can add it to that and just kind of get yourself a nice rich mix, or you can add it directly to your plants. Um, and, and that sort of thing. Um, it's, it's has a, you know, a, a million uses added to your gardens at the end of the year, whichever you want to do. I usually end up mixing it with a little bit of finished compost. <clears throat> and then I just add it to the area that I'm, uh, I'm planting. So wherever I'm planting, I just, and uh, instead of backfilling it with the existing soil, when you dig your little trench and put your seeds in, I, I just cover it up, cover the seeds up with my soil mix. And that's what I do. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, and I'm glad you went into your composting setup because that that's one thing that we still have to get going here, although I guess the birds are kind of our, our composting um, <laughs> apparatus right now. They get all the leftovers, but or not all the leftovers, but scraps. Um, but yeah, comp we definitely need to get uh, get the composting going, and that uh, um, seems like a pretty easy way to get started. Um, I started one, uh, believe it or not, I started one back in like a March or April of this year, and uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I guess the, the pile was a little too close to the house and it attracted a skunk. Um, and, uh, just narrowly grazed my dog, um, with, uh, with, with, uh, one morning they got in a little bit of a tussle, but, uh, um, so I, I, I stopped with that compost pile, but now I need to, I, something I need to get back to anyway. So, uh, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned that. Um, I guess, uh, I don't think there was anything else on, on any other questions on the, the, the soil. Um, well, I get, yeah, go ahead. so. What I what I've done is so pallets are probably um, pallets are your friend for the homesteader because you can make a lot of things from pallets that are useful to you around the homestead uh, and pallets are free at least for now um, you know with the way lumber is right now it might not always be the case but usually you can get pallets for free so. I have uh, four compost bins that I made out of essentially three pallets each. So just three sides pallets. Mm -hmm. um, that allows for a little bit of um, airflow along the sides too, because, you know, pallets have spaces between the boards. But what I do just so that um, it makes my life a little bit easier is I put some, um, you know, larger bulky material in one and one and then i put like smaller stuff that i know will rot fairly quickly in another one and then i have a screen on top of another one and that's my finished compost and what i do is i add i let the you know the big bulky woody kind of stuff I let that rot for a little bit and i i add it to uh the stuff that uh, the smaller material mm -hmm. a little at a time the reason for doing this is you'll actually get um, usable compost faster. Um, and, it, you know, you don't have to wait a year for all of that, you know, woody material to break down. Um, you can just add it a little bit at a time and, you know, things that'll decompose fast, whether that's, you know, vegetable scraps, tomato peel, you know, whatever the thing is, um, stuff that'll break down fast. I keep that in a separate bin and then I, I screen that and throw the, the, um, you know, the fine material goes into one bin and then the rest I just throw back. So I always have, um, it ends up being, uh, the, the case that I always have usable finished compost on hand whenever I need it. Um, so a lot of people will just sort of pile it all in one pile and then it, it just takes forever for mm -hmm. that to become uh, usable material you know what i mean so if you kind of separate these things a little bit and just add them together slowly it it ends up being uh much quicker and easier for you and it, it, you know it might not be uh, uh as discouraging you know 
brilliant advice. But, um, I like that. I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I like making life easy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Certainly. Then it sounds like basically the same process as uh, I'm going to start raising mealworms here because you can feed those to all the animals too. Um, but nice. uh, I guess uh, it seems kind of like the a similar, similar I guess process for for mealworms. Basically, just move them, move from one tote to another, um, essentially. But uh, you have, do you raise uh, any any experience with mealworms? A curiosity. I've never raised mealworms. Um... I've, I've eaten mealworms, but uh, I understand they're a pretty good source of protein, um, if that were the case. <laughs> um, but no, I've never never raised mealworms. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Very good. All right. Well, um, awesome, Sec. Well, we've been, we've been going for about an hour here. Um, I guess just uh, um, the, the last thing I'll, I'll mention is uh, you, you brought up a, a really great idea uh, to me, and it's, it's kind of something that already already – kind of spontaneously um, been coming about uh, coming about uh, via the I guess the Pasnia um, network in general but uh, I guess uh, seed exchanges we had uh, um, one Pasnia sent us garlic last year which we harvested this year it's incredible and uh, Sec you sent us some I think blackberry seeds and, and a couple other ones too I don't recall off the top of my head what, what all it was but um, you sent us some seeds and um, you had brought up uh, I guess a potential and I guess a, a bigger more intentional idea of um I guess uh, um, coordinating bulk seed buys um, to where um, you, you, you buy in bulk, you save money, and so then we just kind of coordinate it through the network. So, do you want to talk a little bit about um, a little bit about that proposal? If I didn't already just lay it all out pretty simply. <laughs> well, I, the, well, let me a little background, right? So, if you buy the little packets of seeds, it's more expensive to do it that way. You get very few seeds. It's always cheaper to buy in bulk. Now, the problem with that is um, eventually those seeds will uh, lose their germination rate. Um, you know, the, the more years go by and then you're still using that big bag of seeds, the um, less li the less amount of them that will uh, propagate uh, plants. Mm -hmm. So um, I do it anyway just because I, I, I just buy big bags of seeds and I'll just um, – it's always more than I need. And sometimes I'll, you know, give them, give them out. But if, if we could make it a coordinated effort somehow, and I'm, I'm not quite sure how, you know, the logistics would work, but um, it would be much cheaper for everyone if like each person bought a bulk order of one particular thing and every person, every other person kind of did the same and we just exchanged them and we'd all save a little bit of money. And if you buy them in bulk, the, the per seed, it's like next to nothing. You know, you can get a huge bag of whatever kinds of seeds for usually pretty cheap, a lot cheaper per seed than you would buying little packets at the store, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how the logistics would work. It, it's just something that I kind of already do. But if more people did the same thing, it, we could all benefit at the same time as, as some sort of seed exchange, you know. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's a great idea, and um, I'm not exactly sure how it will look or come together yet. Um, if it's because uh, it's uh, whether uh, there's going to be a spot on the website for like um, for stakeholders, so people who are vetted and can can log in. Um, and then I also hope like, I'm guessing there'll just be a Telegram channel too for it, um, as as there is now. Um, but I mean, I, I'm I'm not exactly sure. But whether it's placed on the website or just a, a more I guess loose Telegram channel, um, that's the there's the that's a lot of that uh, I guess infrastructure and logistics stuff is is being handled in the background right now. Um, <laughs> we're, we're we're trying to get the Freedom Box and the Pasnia Library um, set up. Um, and then we'll 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 certainly look to start coordinating things like that. And I also want to get the the I guess the stakeholder um, bulletin for this year out um, before Vani Fest too, um, and maybe even before the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest, which is coming up next month, um, for those who uh, are uh, able to make it to Michigan for that. But um, anyway, um, so yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that uh, suggestion. Something that's going to be it's going to be incorporated. I just don't know how it's going to come together yet. Thankfully, we've got people. Got a couple developers that have offered help for things, so um, I will probably be uh, I'm reaching out to those folks to see if uh, something can be put together. But uh, we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, but, I don't uh, even know if it needed. Oh, sorry. I don't even know if it need to be like super formal either. It could be just something like you said, like a Telegram group. Yeah, where that'd be the easiest. Anybody who's way, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. 
we don't need, I don't think we need an app or something you know no but, no uh, but 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 it will be it will be there there's uh, I guess an underlying infrastructure that's being built um <laughs> or we're working working on some things we've talked about talked about another podcast and such but um anyway yeah we've been going for for about an, for about an hour here a second yeah like I said I really appreciate that idea and um and uh, appreciate the seeds and appreciate the the, the diplomatic relations between our our uh, our fine second realms and uh, I guess just to to close that to to close it out any closing thoughts on your part or uh, anything you'd like to plug before I let you go um no I mean you can find the Agora podcast on Anchor um it's on various streaming sites and also uh, the Agora podcast Telegram group uh, other than that I don't really uh, do much social media. Um, but no, thank you for having me on. Uh, this has been a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to furthering diplomatic relations between <laughs> our two territories in the future. Certainly, man. Certainly. Well, I, I, I do appreciate it, and um, yeah, uh, we'll uh, we're, we'll certainly be in touch. Um, as for for the rest of uh, you, you've uh, rest of the self liberators here. Thanks so much for tuning into uh, this episode of the podcast. Please do go check out uh, um, the Agora. I'll put links to. Um, all uh, all the relevant links will be in the show notes as always. Uh, sorry for that little brief lapse in, in uh, episode. It's been a couple of months, but uh, yeah, I've been I guess turning my uh, my focus from the digital second realm to the physical. Lots of stuff going on here at the homestead, and uh, lots to prepare for. But uh, yeah, all good things. And uh, I've got this episode coming out. Um, I was on uh, um, the School Sucks project just recently. Um, which the episode should be released uh, in the next few days, talking about paths to intentional community. So uh, another highly relevant uh, conversation, related conversation there. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, pazania.com for all the updates there, um, fawnypodcast.com for everything related to this podcast, and uh, Liberty and Type Publications for all of uh, you know, for all of your book uh, and publishing uh, liberation needs. Uh, LibertyandTech.com is the website for that. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, always remember, if Ani was yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the First, building. let See me you. assume, correctly or incorrectly, that the readers of these writings will fall into one of three categories. One of these groups will be composed of non-cannabis users, which I hope will be the most benefited by these writings. The second group will be those who have complete understanding of my first few sentences as it relates to our relationship with the herb. Rather than a wisdom to be gained, this is more a path to be followed, alteration but not addition. The last group, which consists of everyone else, will be those who ultimately decide on the future of society's relationship with the goddess. They are blessed and cursed by having the attention of the other two groups as each year passes and as culture and politics shift, the ongoing momentum of the beloved mother will be decided by the actions of these individuals. Those in the other two groups say to them, choose wisely. However, just as our relationship with the goddess is affected by differences in terminology, so too is the transmission of this advice. As a result, their one mandate is found to have two forms. One form is the hope that their decisions regarding cannabis use will have minimal collateral damage to themselves and their community. The second form of this challenge is a hydra of method and manner. As the cell division of society occurs ever more frequently, terms not only shift, they alter completely from whatever original source they may or may not have had. <laughs>